What's up, music fans of the internet? I'm Kevin. I'm Derek. And together we are last week's album, Two Opinions on the Best New Music. And in this episode, we're talking about the new album from Health called Death Magic. Is it a healthy listen? Is it a deadly one? We'll see. But we'll kick things off like we always do, drinking a beer. Cheers, Derek and everyone at home. Cheers. And a little bit of background for you on Health. Uh, they are a noise rock band from Los Angeles. This is their third or sixth album, depending on how you count. Uh, they actually released two remix albums and a soundtrack to the video game Max Payne 3. So if you're counting those as well, this would be their sixth. Um, but it's their third sort of proper album. And it's actually been six years since their last album. Um, this one was actually meticulously crafted. They re-recorded it four times. So I guess that means they recorded it five times. Um, but yeah, let's talk about what it sounds like. Derek, what do you think? Uh, Kevin, I think Death Magic sounds like sleigh bells and Skrillex dancing at a rave as the XX hold hands with the Animal Collective dejectedly watching on from the sidelines. Wow, that is a meaty sounds like. I like it. Uh, I'm going to say this sounds like Nine Inch Nails teams up with Girl Band to compose the soundtrack to Drive 2, if that were to come out sometime soon. That would be cool. Uh, let's talk about some key tracks. Derek, what are you going with? I'm going with Stone Fist and Dark Enough. All right, I'm going with Life and Salvia. So why don't you pick us off with Stone Fist, Derek? Uh, Stone Fist kind of follows um, this short opener that kind of lulls you into sleep. But when Stone Fist hits, it hits hard. There are huge sinister synth blasts, pulsating bulls, uh, bass drum, and then it kind of shifts into uh, a much more sparsely instrument, uh, sparser instrumentation, uh, instrument-wise uh, deal in the, there uh, in the verse. Can't even find my words here. Uh, churning bass, murmurs and groans of ambient sounds, and there's just a mesmerizing vocal melody. The track really goes back and forth between these two vastly different sounds. Um, and the lyrics are cool, it, 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 the very uh, cool do vocal delivery and chilling lyrics, uh, for example, and though we know how far we've come, we stay possessed by what we lost. Um, so just really a uh, strong opener. Yeah, um, that was a good one. I'm going to talk about life, number seven. Um, it opens with this really great line, we lie awake at night, we're tired of waiting, too high to sleep, too tired to try. And then this sort of alarm clock based hook comes in, which mirrors that line really, really nicely. And it's got this really industrial pop beat with um, some synth and really androgynous vocals. And I think it's probably one of the friendliest, most approachable tracks on the album, but it still has that dark intensity that sort of runs throughout uh, Death Magic. So what about Dark Enough, Derek? I will say this about Dark Enough, not entirely approachable. But um, it does feature muddy synths, non-committal keys, all too coolly delivered vocal melody, sharp stinging synth barbs that catch you when you least expect it, and a verse whose story uh, you know, seems peculiarly to change the second time around. Um, the lyrics read like a guiltless admission of infidelity. Um, one example, blink, so what? It's hard to tell the difference. We cheat. Why not? It's hard to know what you want. Um, so just really uh, kind of interesting theme here, uh, which is also uh, uh, mirrored in, in this very tense uh, you know, musical soundtrack there. Yeah. Um, next up, I've got Salvia. And Derek, you mentioned on Stone Fist that they use sort of polar opposites. To me, this song is like a call and response between this machine gun beat and these ethereal swirling synths, just completely opposites. And to me, it's just funny to listen to um, in a good way. It's hilarious the way it reels from one extreme to the next. Really kind of reminds me of girl band um, in that way. And I just love the way they separate two of their most disparate elements, almost like oil and water here, just to show you how different they are on this track, but how on other tracks, they really blend them together nicely. And with that, we'll talk about some best lyrics, Derek. What do you have? Uh, I'm going with one from the track Victim. Uh, and they say, no, we'll never feel the same as it was today. No, we'll never be here again. 
but I still wake up and lie to myself. Um, just very straightforward, kind of dark, you know, uh, looking at, um, you know, trying to live life to its fullest while acknowledging, you know, one's own uh, mortality. Um, so, you, you know, it, it gets you thinking. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the lines do. Uh, also, like this one that I'm pulling from Drugs Exist. He says, live as you'd like. It's hard to know what's right. Pray if you want, but try to love the ones who don't. And uh, he's on all the sort of lyrical themes of this album. Derek, you mentioned mortality, uh, as well as morality and lovelessness, which happens to come up a lot as well. And with that, we'll talk about the big question. Is this a healthy listen or a deadly one? And give it an overall rating. Derek, start us off. Uh, I'm going to say it's a healthy listen, but if, you know, prolonged exposure meant, made this a deadly one, <laughs> um, things I really liked, you know, their ability to blend the, the electronic and industrial sounds, it was very intriguing, great production, you know, nothing seemed out of place, meshed together well, especially when it wasn't supposed to mesh together well. You know, Kevin, what you are mentioning earlier, uh, told, you know, definitely one of those examples. Um, I also kind of like the way they were kind of brought back certain melodies or themes um, introduced in later tracks. Uh, a lot of really interesting lyrical themes. Um, you know, this is definitely kind of a, an involved listen. And so, you know, while this uh, in short doses or, you know, well-monitored doses could be good for the health, it may not be good for the gander. So exercise caution before, in, before throwing this down at, at the party. Yes, definitely. Um, to echo that, Derek, um, I think it's probably both a healthy listen and a deadly one um, in the vein of, you know, what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. And I think it really seems like a trying listen at first blush, but it's also sort of addictively catchy underneath it all um, after repeated listens. And um, as far as rating on the pro side, I think they've got this great sort of goth pop sound it's really interesting and gripping. They can melt your mind and your body sort of simultaneously. And I think it's a great mix of human and machine. Um, on the con side, it's not something you can listen to every day, um, Derek, to your point. And I think the lyrics um, can get a little bit redundant here and there. So yeah, um, what was the rating you gave it again, Derek? You know, I was just thinking I didn't give one, so I'm gonna give it a three out of five. <laughs> I was wondering if I'd just forgotten. Uh, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5, so that's a uh, 7 out of 10 in total. Definitely check out Death Magic by Health and let us know what you think. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to us here at last week's album. Where we're bringing you two opinions on the best new music. And um, until next time, cheers, guys. I'm Kevin. I'm Derek. See you next time.